don't have wheels on my car. <laughs> okay. That's one thing you should know about me. And roll credits. I mean, seriously, you can't have a driver heist movie without wheels. Jeez, you have to wait till the sequel. Drive to Now with Wheels. Oh, hello, my name is Fu Manchu. And speaking of drive... It's one of my all-time favorite movies. I love everything about it. I love Ryan Gosling. I love the movie. I love the music. Everything. This movie is awesome. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Now, another thing that I really like is 1-6 scale figures. And this is a character that I would love standing on my 1-6 scale figure shelf. Now... As his character goes, his costume's pretty simplistic. He wears a windbreaker, he's got some gloves, he has some jeans on, and some shoes. The only problem is his shoes, gloves, and his windbreaker are all kind of unique. So, yeah, good luck finding those on the 1-6 scale market at a cheap price. But sometimes there's a company out there that will make a knockoff figure based on a character from a movie or something. And that's what we'll be reviewing today. So let's go check it out, shall we? Hey, wait a minute. You didn't have a scorpion on your jacket there. I cry foul. Straight from Dexter's kill room. All the crap this thing is wrapped in plastic. So let's remove it and check it out, shall we? There. That's better. Now, here's the front of the box looking like a scene from The Shining or something. Holy crap, man. Or maybe HAL 9000 is watching uh, the driver. I don't know. But down here, you'll see that it says, One Six Scale Posable Figure Drive. They actually put the name of the movie on there. That's kind of cool. But down here, look at this. Let's have been rushed forward, comma, fire. This is a safeguard, the dignity of war. We must continue to fight. Okay. I, I really don't know what that means uh, to do with the movie. Uh, cool. So anyways, this is the box, and it's pretty awesome. Down the side of the box, you'll see a picture of the driver right there with his scorpion jacket, and that jacket looks awesome. You'll see that he's also holding the hammer, and that is cool as well. Down here, you'll see that it is the BBK 004, so it's three before James Bond, so it's got to be awesome. Let's look at the back of the box, shall we? So, here's the back of the box. It has the Drive logo again, 1-6 scale, posable figure, and you can see the figure there with all the different accessories and things he comes with. And down here, you can actually see some of the accessories highlighted in little squares, and that is awesome. Down here, you got a warning, and you got the company's name, Bibike, and that is very cool. Down the side of the box, you get his alternate costume here, which is how he looked during most of the movie, too, and that is very cool. And then down here, you got BBK 004, and that is awesome. Let's look back at the front of the box, shall we? So, here's the front of the box for the very last time, and I have to say I absolutely love the fact that there are smaller companies out there willing to take the time to make figures of characters that we want from movies that no big company seems to be making. Now, you also have to realize that this is not going to be Hot Toys quality, but hey, it costs a fraction of what a Hot Toys figure goes for, and just the fact that you get a figure of the character is what counts, and that is awesome. Now, I say we waste no more time, because I've been wanting to get a figure of this guy for a long, long time, so I say we open it up. Now, if you look down here, you'll notice that the front of the box is actually a slip cover, and as you see, if you pull it off, you will find a black box underneath there, and that is awesome. It's like a little shoe box. So when you open up the shoe box, you find... That it was a lot harder to open that box than I thought it would. Seriously, I think it's because it's made out of a very matte finish, but that lid would not slide off. And what you didn't see was me wrestling with it for about five minutes. But anyways, I got the box open, and underneath we find the usual foam. And underneath the foam we find... A figure and all his accessories. And even though his face is obscured by plastic, I'm already happy. As you can see, the driver there is wearing his blue jean jacket. He's got his blue L.A. hat there, his sunglasses, his cell phone. There's his watch. He's wearing the gloves on his hands. And then down here, you've got his very iconic scorpion windbreaker and the hammer from the very pivotal scene in the movie and check out those shoes those look awesome it's got they've got real laces and everything now as i said at the beginning of this video those shoes his gloves and then his windbreaker over here are all very unique looking so yeah good luck putting together a kit bash figure unless you shell out the money to get some you know homemade versions of like the jacket or something like that and there's some really good ones out there but it can cost more than this actual figure cost. So yeah, it's really nice to get all the pieces together all in one box set. And you know what's really neat is to get the blue jean jacket. I mean, he wore that a lot in the movie too, and it's really cool to get both looks. I mean, yeah, most people are going to go with this look, but he had this look a lot in the movie, so it's really cool to get that, you know, option. 
Very cool indeed. So I say we waste no more time and pull him out of the box and check him out, shall we? So here's Ryan the driver, no other name, Gosling, fresh out of the package. And looking at this thing, I have to say there are some pros and some cons. Now, as you can see, his body looks really, really thin. So I'm assuming they went with like a uh, knockoff Hot Toys, you know, thin type kind of body or whatever. But uh, yeah, Ryan Gosling did look pretty thin in the movie, but... I don't know, his neck looks really long, kind of like the uh, Doc Holliday figure that I reviewed a long time ago. I don't know if they just made his neck too long, if the peg's too big or what. But, I mean, I'm sure you could fix this by changing some of the bodies out and stuff like that. But this is how he looks fresh out of the package. He almost looks very Scarecrow-esque. But, you know, like I said, that can be fixed probably with a body swap. I don't know. Maybe you need to futz with his clothes. You got me. But you know what? I'm still happy with it because, like I said, all the accessories and stuff like that, the head sculpt looks very, very good. I mean, it's not Hot Toys quality, quality or whatever, but it still looks really good. It looks just like the character. Now, down here, you've got his blue jean jacket, which seems to be snapped up right there at the front. So let's see what it looks like when we unsnap the snap, shall we? So, with the jacket unsnapped, you can see that he's wearing his, like, white Henley short sleeve shirt there underneath there, and that is very cool indeed. Now, as you can see, the neck is very long, and if I think if you remove, like, the neck peg thing that it, that it uh, snaps to you, because it doesn't match color scheme-wise... See, I mean, that's adding a lot of height to it, so if you took that off, or if you gave him a shorter peg, or whatever, I don't know, it would probably look a lot better, but yeah, you really have to adjust the figure in order to get him to look right, but like I said, this is a knockoff figure, so you can't expect it to be 100% perfect. Just the fact that he comes with all the accessories and his head sculpt makes me happy, that is cool. Now, one of the things I really like about it is that they captured Ryan Gosling's face. I mean, that looks just like him from the movie. They did a great job. They even got his little mole there on the side of his cheek, and that is very cool, too. Man, this is very cool, and I can't wait to see him in that scorpion coat. But before we do, let's check him out. Now, down here, you'll see that he has those really neat-looking tan shoes with the laces. Like I said, there are boots that come up over his ankle, and that is very cool. You've got his blue jeans, which look very neat. He only comes with these two hands. Now, I guess he could have came with, like, some just normal hands with no gloves, but I'd prefer him wearing the gloves anyways. Besides, if you've got other figures, you've got extra hands. As you can see, this one's made for holding either a steering wheel or the hammer, probably just the hammer. And then over here, he's got the waving hand, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, you got his belt there, and then you've got his blue jean jacket, white t-shirt, and that is awesome. So let's flip him around and check him out from behind, shall we? So, here's the figure from behind, and check it out, it's me from middle school and high school, oh my goodness. But you know what, that is very cool indeed, you can see that his hair there is, uh, like, highlighted to have it look like it's a little thinner there at the bottom, or shaved down, and that is very cool indeed, you got his, I still say his neck's too long, but that's what everybody's probably gonna think. And then down here you've got his gloves, and then down here you've got his jeans and his shoes, and that is awesome. So let's flip him back around, shall we? And I have to say, as skinny as this figure looks, and, you know, as long as his neck looks and stuff, I'm still very, very happy with it. I, you know, no regrets whatsoever about getting it. And I can't wait to see him in his scorpion coat, like I said, just to see it in a different version. This is just so cool indeed. But before we do, let's check out the accessories, shall we? Now, because I count it as an accessory, here's what the figure looks like without the blue jean jacket. Now, that shirt was actually bunched up around his shoulders. When I first took off the coat, it kind of looked like he was wearing a muscle shirt or something. But as you can see, the sleeves can be pulled down over the arms. Now, speaking of the arms, they have a very weird shape to them. Now, when I was taking off the coat, it felt like this might be a damn toy's body or something underneath there, the way the shoulders felt. But no, this is a very unique looking body, as you can see. He's got some strange looking biceps there, but since the arms are covered up by the coats and stuff like that, I guess it really doesn't matter at all. The strangest thing is, he doesn't look quite as giraffe-necked now, does it? That's kind of weird. Now, I did adjust the shirt a little bit. Maybe that has something to do with it, but yeah, so I mean, he actually looks a little bit better like this. That's kind of strange. Now, in the movie, because it took place over a bunch of different days, he actually had different colored shirts, like a gray one and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's good enough just to get this shirt, and besides, you can dye it if you really wanted one of the other colors. But this is the way he looked most of the time in the movie, and that is awesome. Now, speaking of the blue jean jacket, here it is. This is what it looks like when it's taken off, and it looks just like a real blue jean jacket. You've got his scorpion windbreaker right there looking, oh, so awesome. That is so cool. There's his L.A. hat, which is packed with a little bit of foam to give it that shape. He has his little glasses there. I thought his glasses were dark-lensed, but I can't remember. I, I don't remember them being light orange-lensed, but 
That's okay, I don't care. He won't be wearing them on my figure. Anyway, there's his watch, as you can see. He has a hammer, uh, as you can see as well. Now, that hammer tip is metal, and that is awesome. I believe the bottom part is just plastic, but yeah, that tip is actually metal, so that's pretty cool. It's got a little bit of weight to it. And then there's his cell phone, and we'll look at all of those a little bit better close up. But for right now, before we look at him up close, let's see what he looks like with that scorpion jacket on, shall we? So, here he is with the scorpion coat on, and man, this thing doesn't fit him at all. Look at this. Just kind of like drapes over the figure. Man. Oh, wait. Hold on a second. Let me adjust this. There. That's better. Man, you know you really got to adjust this coat right, or it looks like a giant trash bag just laying on top of the figure or something. Anyways, here he is wearing the scorpion jacket, and that looks awesome. Awesome. Now, one of the things that I did not mention was, at the point where you saw my figure not wearing the blue jean jacket, everything before that scene was filmed like four or five days prior. And in that amount of time, I actually tried to swap out his neck joint and his body. I tried to do all sorts of things to see if I could get him to not look quite so giraffe necked. Now, I didn't have any luck whatsoever removing the neck peg joint thingamabobber from this head. For some reason, it felt like it was glued into place, and it just would not budge at all. And the body, I tried to swap it out, but I didn't have a lot of bodies to choose from, and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, this is still the stock figure, and honestly, it doesn't look quite as bad as it did when I first pulled it out of the package, because he really did look giraffe-necked. Now, like I said, just like with my Doc Holiday figure that I had reviewed a long time ago, I could not make that one look, you know, not look good because of that neck being so long. Uh, but this one, I mean, I think this jacket hides it and stuff. You adjust his collar on his shirt enough. I think it can really work. Now, about the body, the arms are kind of strange, because as you can see, like, his left arm is jutting out there just a little bit. They're really hard to adjust and get to lay straight. I don't know if that's because maybe his sleeves are bunching up again underneath the, the you know, the joint or something. I don't know, but you know what? Hey, he still looks fine just standing there. Besides, once you put a bit of pose and just stand him on your shelf, he's going to look fine. Especially if you go with the hand-in-the-pocket kind of pose or something, and that is awesome. So I say we waste no more time and check out this figure up close. What do you say? So, here we go with a super-duper close-up look and starting with the zipper of his jacket, and that looks awesome. Speaking of his jacket, look at the material that it's made out of. That is so cool. And all that stitching and everything, man, they really put in a lot of work just to make this coat alone. That is so cool. There's his pockets there. Now, they are functioning, but I don't know how deep they are. If you want him to have it like his hand totally in his pocket, you might have to remove the hand and just put the wrist peg, you know, joint in there, you know, to make it look like his hand's in there. Up here, you've got buttons on his shirt. Now, I can't tell. I'm assuming those are sewn on. They're so tiny, and it's white on white. I can't tell. Working our way up to his neck here, you can see he's got some freckling painted on, and that is awesome. I love it when companies do the little freckling. That looks so good. It makes the face look more like a real face. Got his mouth and chin right there. Yep, that looks like Ryan Gosling to me. Working our way up to his nose and his eyes. He's got the bright blue eyes, and that is awesome. Yeah, there's no doubt who this is supposed to be, and that is so cool. Got more freckling up there in his head, and then there's his hair. And now, there's a lot of Ryan Gosling heads out there, but in order to make, you know, the right one, you always have to have that right hairstyle and stuff. And this one is drive through and through, and that is awesome. Now, turning the figure to the side, you can see his hairstyle right there, looking very cool indeed. You got his ear, and you can see the part that's shaved a little bit shorter right there. That is very cool. Over here, you can see his mole by his eye, and that is so cool. He's got some more freckling there. It almost looks like the predator targeted him there on his cheek. Holy crap, run, Ryan! And then you've got his nose looking very cool, and his mouth, and that is awesome. That is definitely Ryan Gosling's profile. That looks so cool. Working our way down his neck, as you can see, you've got the collar right there with the little, like, material that almost looks like t-shirt material there at the collar that is very neat you got the uh, button I don't know what that's called the little like flap that comes off the front so you could button it down you've got the um, material there at the shoulder again with the uh, t-shirt kind of material that is very cool it's a very cool looking jacket man uh, the thing is is that you know like sometimes your fingerprints or whatever your fingers can get that like rough kind of skin you know how it not necessarily callous, that's all I'm saying, but where it feels like it can catch on material. Well, this is one of those coats, 
and the real coat too that they you know use in the movie you know if you get one of those uh your fingers can catch on that material and it feels like you're snagging it and stuff like that so be very careful so make sure your fingerprints and stuff aren't all rough but check that out you got the little like cuff there and this one actually goes down pretty long i've seen a, a review of this figure already before and it looked like the sleeves were way too short but then again in the movie it looks like his sleeves are kind of too short too so it looks like the jacket may be like one size too small for him but it looks awesome here you've got his gloves which look very cool you can see his skin underneath there and that skin color actually matches the body very very well indeed now turning the glove to the side a little bit so you can see the front of it you can see the stitching there and look at that he's even got the little dots down his thumb that is so awesome yep down the fingers too that is cool and that's why I was saying these gloves are very specific and uh, like his shoes and his jacket so you kinda need all those pieces and that is awesome I do wish that button would have been painted like a brassy color or gold or something or I think that's what the color it was in the movie that would be very awesome but that'd be an easy fix but yeah this glove looks awesome now working our way down the right side of him over here you've got his ear and there's the shape part of his hair again working our way down his jacket that is so awesome yeah, this coat is cool and feels like the real thing. They did an amazing job. Working our way down here to his right hand, you've got his glove again, looking very cool. Now, like I said, this hand is made for holding the hammer. I do wish it would have came with extra hands and stuff, but honestly, uh, do you really need any more hands? I guess you don't. Over here, you've got the bottom part of his coat, and it's all zippered up, as you can see. Working our way down his jeans, and there you go. They're just normal jeans. There you go, turning him to this side so you can see, you can see his belt is actually poking out right there. It almost looks like his belt almost has a tip to it, but I think that's just a trick of the lighting. And then down here you've got his blue jeans going all the way down to his shoes, and his shoes are awesome as well. As you can see, they, they are made of plastic. They're not leather or anything, but they're made of plastic, and they've got real laces, and those laces really make them look like real shoes. That is so cool. And just like I was saying about the gloves, these are very, very unique, and they look cool. Now, as I said, too, these are kind of boots. They go up over his ankles. I pulled up his pant legs so you can see there, and that is awesome. Now, turning the figure around to check him out from behind, and you've got his hair right there, long and shaggy on top, and then it gets a little bit, a bit buzzed here in the back, and that is very cool indeed. You can see his neck there and the back of his uh, jacket again. As I said, it looks like it's made out of almost like t-shirt material or something. And then working our way down to the scorpion that is expertly sewn on there. And that looks so amazing. It's got all the different tones and color and stuff. They could have just went with one gold color and that would have been awesome. But just like in the movie, he's got, you know, like two-tone or three-tone. I don't know how many tones there are, but that is so awesome indeed. He's got all the little arms and stuff. That looks amazing. I absolutely love that. And yeah, man, just getting all these pieces alone, if you're not happy with like the way his neck is long or anything like that, honestly, just getting all these pieces together, this is so cool and worth every penny in my opinion because just standing this figure on the shelf, you can tell it's supposed to be the driver and that is awesome. So, here's what the figure looks like wearing the glasses. As you can see, they've got real lenses and everything, and that is awesome indeed. Now, like I said, I don't remember the lenses being quite this orange, but then again, I don't know, maybe, maybe I just don't remember. It don't look like I put them on his nose very well. Jeez, that's better. Anyways, yeah, I've had a lot of problems making this video, so I hope you like it. But anyways, I'm just showing off the figure. As you can see, they're Oakley, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's pretty neat, a little uh, Oakley symbol over there. Very awesome indeed. And I absolutely love seeing all those little details and stuff. That is so cool. Another thing that's so cool is check out this little baseball cap. This is so neat. He's got the little vent hole there. The LA right there. That is so awesome. I love that that's the exact symbol. Very cool indeed. You got the collar, the brim of the, I'm sorry, the collar. The brim of the hat right there looking very neat indeed. And then there's his glasses underneath. That looks so cool and it fits him perfectly. Because a lot of the times when you put a hat on a figure, it just doesn't look right at all. Nope, this hat is perfect and looks so good. Now, I don't know if this blue will stain the figure's head, so I don't recommend leaving it on for a long period of time, or at least putting it on a head that you don't mind getting damaged uh, to see if it stains, because that blue would not look good on his forehead. So, yeah, be very, very careful with it. But you know what? This looks awesome. And check this out. What would the driver be without his cell phone? And that looks so awesome, man. You can even see little faces on there. That is so cool. You got little phone numbers and everything. The call and hang up button. Look, it even says Dr. John. 
Hey, man, that's pretty cool. I'm going to call Dr. John later, because this is in scale with me, so I'm going to call him. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I didn't expect it to have little faces on there. That is so cool. And the details don't stop on the front of the phone. You've got the little, like, uh, silver squares there. Very cool indeed. Yep, that looks like a cell phone. Very awesome. Now, here's what his watch looks like up close, and check that out. It's got the little dials and everything. Very cool indeed. Now, it has the little brown band and stuff. Now, that's another thing that can be kind of hard to find on the 1-6 scale market. I mean, you can find watches and stuff, but you always kind of want the specific ones and junk. Like, if you, you know, watch Dexter, he has a very specific watch and stuff like that. So, yeah, this is another one that, you know, might be a hard piece to find, and it's really cool to get all these pieces in one set. That is awesome. And last up, we have his hammer, and that is awesome. Check that out. As I said, the tip is all metal, and that is very cool. And then the back here, I believe, is just plastic. It's not like the uh, axe from the Shining figure that I reviewed, uh, where the handle was actually made out of wood. That would have been a really neat touch, but you know what? It doesn't need to be in this scale, because it is very, very tiny indeed. Just the fact that that looks like a real hammer there at the end, that is awesome. Oh, and it's worth noting, I checked the movie, he does kind of have orange lenses in his uh, glasses. They're, they're darker, more like amber colored. But if you look carefully, the glasses that he came with with this figure aren't quite the same shape. So yeah, these are a little bit different, but hey, it doesn't matter because I'm not going to be posing them, wearing them anyways. So, what did I think of this figure? Well, I absolutely love it. It does have its problems, though. Looking at it like this, you can't tell that it has a giraffe neck, so that's really cool indeed. So, yeah, if you adjust the clothes, it'll be fine. But the figure does have a lot of problems. One of the problems that I haven't talked about is his watch. Now, his watch doesn't have any... Uh, uh, a slit up the back of it or whatever to make the uh, band go through the little uh, silver part of it. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll cut that in there and maybe it'll go. But then the band wouldn't fit through the silver part. So I just glued it down into place so it looks like he's wearing it anyways. But So yeah, little things like that that you don't really think, you know, is going to happen when you review a figure. You think, oh, you know, it comes with a watch. I'll put the watch on. But well, the watch wouldn't go on, so, yeah, you kind of have to figure out a way around it. The giraffe neck did bother me, and like I said, I did try to swap out the body and stuff. I tried to fix the neck. There was nothing I could do. I'm sure other people could do it and fix it and make it look better, but honestly, looking at it like this, I don't have a problem with it at all. I think it is awesome. I think it looks just like the character, and I think I couldn't ask for anything more. So, there's my review of the BBK004 Drive, 1-6 scale figure of The Driver, played by Ryan Gosling, and that is awesome. Yes, this figure does have a few problems here and there, and honestly, there's one thing wrong with it that I never brought up in this review, but I do wish it was there. He doesn't have a 1-6 scale toothpick sticking out of his mouth. Dang it! I mean, damn toys showed that they can do it with the billet figure, so, man, why didn't you do it? But you know what? That could be totally customized, and I don't mind at all. This figure has all the right details, and that is awesome. And honestly, it was a pretty good price, too, considering, and I absolutely love it. So honestly, if you like Drive as much as I do, or Ryan Gosling, because, hey, hey, Ryan, if you want to call me, call me, dude. I will totally fangirl out over you. Seriously, you're awesome. Man, I wish I could work with you. But anyways, I hope you like this review, and if you like this figure, go check it out, because it's really, really cool. So, until next time, tune in for more... Foo Reviews! <laughs> oh, and one more thing. Why didn't this figure come with that creepy-looking actor mask that he wore in the movie? Seriously, that thing is so creepy-looking, it would look so cool standing on the shelf, maybe have him holding it. I don't know, man. That would have been awesome. Still kind of creepy, though. Hey, this is Nolan North. You don't want to miss Foo Reviews.